Welcome to Angel Speaks. In this video, I'm going to share my testimony with you guys. It's been almost a year since God has been putting this in my heart and people have requested me to do this video. So I apologize for being so late with it, but um, I figure what better time to do it than on a day um, on Martin Luther King Jr. Day where a man of faith is is honored and celebrated. This man had a dream. God gave him a dream once, and that dream was for people to be free and united. And so I des decided that now was the day, um, now was the time to be free, to be free from fear. It's been, uh, almost three years since I became free from a abusive marriage that had me bound for nine years. And so I want to basically share that story with you guys, how I um, became bound in the beginning and how that, you know, damaged me throughout the years. Um, but God set me free in the end. And he can, you know, whatever he did for me, he could do for you. And I want to share that to encourage anyone that's still bound or you're still trying to heal from the abuse you went through. I want to, I hope to give you faith after you watch this video. And so please bear with me. So basically, when I met this person, um, I was in my early 20s. I was a virgin and I was very naive. Um, my guard was down. You know, I fell away. I got a little further from God. And so my my discernment and my guard was just down. And so this person, when he came into my life, um, you know, he seemed very intelligent and um, something about him kind of seemed like a father figure that I guess drew me to him. You know, he seemed intelligent and and that he could teach me things. And so, you know, that kind of drew me in a little bit. And but there was manipulation going on in the very beginning that I had no clue. I didn't even know what manipulation meant <laughs> at that time. But looking back, it, it makes sense now. Um, he would tell me things, you know, um, about me being a virgin, like, oh, you know you being a virgin is a big responsibility on me. And, you know, I, he, he kind of like put it like, if like, like it was such a, you know, responsibility that I was a virgin and that it put pressure on him in some way. Like he would say things that would kind of make me feel like bad about being a virgin or to make me feel like I might lose him because, you know, it's just, he would just say these things and to, I guess, try to rule me in more. Um, and so when he was around a lot of women, you know, he would introduce me to a lot of woman friends. He wanted me to kind of see him as this person that everybody wanted to be with. And, you know, at the same time, say things to make me feel insecure with, I guess, him and me. But at the same time, he was pursuing me. Um you know, persuas persuasively at the time. So basically one day he took my virginity um, and it was not in a loving way. <laughs> um, I actually, you know, cried and screamed and wanted him to stop and he didn't listen to me. Um, so he pretty much raped me. Um, that's it. Rape, it's an ugly word. Many women have experienced it um it is what it is and you know i felt very violated afterwards and um i was very hurt and i left crying and he called me the next day acted like nothing happened and i said i can't talk to you anymore like what are you doing calling me acting like nothing happened and he's like, what are you talking about? You know, and when he saw that I was like, I can't talk to you. He started, you know, he's really sorry bit, you know, apologized. And 
Um, I told him I, I will forgive him, but I couldn't talk to him anymore. And when he saw that the sympathy card wasn't working, he used intimidation tactics. And he said, well, you know, now that you're not a virgin anymore, you have to be with somebody. And so when he said that to me, fear, fear came over me. And, and I was confused because I didn't understand that, um, why he would say that. And so I hung up on him. And at the time I, I was, you know, doing hair, working at a hair salon. So I was just doing somebody's hair the whole time, confused and afraid. Like, why, why do I have to be with somebody? What's going to happen now that I'm not a virgin? I don't understand. And, and I was so just feeling so many different emotions and he kept calling me and, and then he would go back to the sympathy card again. I'm so sorry, please. I feel so bad. You know, give me another chance. Give me a chance to prove to you that, you know, I, you could trust me and all that. Um, let's just be friends. Look, can we at least be friends? And, you know, I I gave into it. You know, I, I felt like he was very genuine when he said the things that he said. I believed that he was sorry. And I, you know, decided to stay being his friend and, and talk to him on the phone. And, you know, he was just very, was very, his, he used his words very meticulously. And um, I, you know, it became a situation ship pretty much, he, you know, and I ended up getting pregnant. I ended up getting pregnant and um, I actually decided I was not going to deal with him anymore. Um, the relationship, whatever it was, was was draining me and um and it was it was it was just a matter of a few months the first few months you know I was like I'm done and I ended up finding out I was pregnant and so um I became depressed I, I felt that that would b bound us together because I, I I knew we weren't meant to be because he wasn't a believer and just it was just not healthy what happened and how it was going, you know, um, even in the beginning, it's just, he was trying to change my mind to become his mind. And it was just, it wasn't, you know, what it's supposed to be. But um, once I got pregnant, it, it was like something that kind of kept me afraid um, for different reasons. Um, he, he ended up asking me to move in with him. And so, I had a choice. Do I stay living with my dad so that he can condemn me every time the baby cries? Or do I move in with this person that I really don't know like that, that seems not healthy um, and give it a chance because we're about to have a baby. So I chose that, the latter, and we moved, I moved in with him. And, um, and it started to go downhill. You know, that's when, you know, the put downs began. And Everything I did was followed by a critique, you know. Um, when I asked him to, to do something for me, you know, he yelled at me. The first time I asked him for a massage, I was pregnant and I, I would get back aches and I asked him to give me a massage and he yelled at me. and was like, how dare you ask me to do that for you? You didn't even ask if I was busy on my computer doing something important. Like, and he really like yelled at me like I was this child and, and I, and I, it put more fear in me, you know, I felt like I was a prisoner in a house with a monster, like, this is what the devil wanted me to think, you know, and I bought into it, I was like, wow, I have no hope, like, I have no money, I can't be on my own, I have nothing saved up, you know, I can't live with my dad at the time, it was like, I couldn't take that, the condemnation that I knew my dad would, that I was afraid that my dad would give me, and I knew that this person was someone that I really didn't know like that. And I, I saw that he had a bad temper and I just, I became depressed. But, um, you know, as time goes on, you try to make the best of it. And I kept, you know, trying to do better. You know, I, I kept trying to learn how to cook better, even though he would critique it and put me down and, and act like his way was always better. I just kept trying, and, you know, it, it went from cooking to the bedroom, everything that I did. It was like comparing me to other people and women and like, you know, I wasn't good enough. You know, he, he would make me feel bad that I wasn't an expert on things that I never did before. And so it, it started to tear my self-esteem down as well as it, it, it pushed me to like feel like I had to perfect everything to get him to love me more. 
and it was just you know the more you try the more it's not good enough and through the years it just got worse um i got tired of him mistreating me so i started to seek revenge and you know well if he's gonna be doing all this crap then i'm gonna do it too you know and it was just it was damaging me in different ways i mean i was becoming someone that i didn't want to be um it's just it it wasn't you know it was unhealthy um and the eighth year was when I realized you know this is more serious than I thought you know because I, I left him quite a few times but I would always end up coming back because I was met with a reality that I was not willing to face as well as I just felt a lot of pain that um no one told me what you would feel when you would leave an abusive relationship nobody told me that you're gonna suffer a lot and i didn't know that and so um i couldn't handle that pain so i would go back to him and um when i saw that it was it was it was getting to be too much was when um i realized you know one day i was at the gym and I was in, on, in an aerobics class and I was dancing and all of a sudden in my mind, I said, oh my gosh, nobody knows what I'm going through and no one can help me and I'm all alone. And that was like an epiphany moment that I had and I ran out the, the aerobics class and I went to the elliptical and I was like, no, everything's fine, everything's fine. And, you know, usually I was able to cheer myself up and encourage myself, but this day I had no control. <laughs> and when I went on the elliptical, it was like the walls started to close in on me and I saw everything literally and I just, I couldn't breathe. I was having a panic attack and I ran out the gym and I went to my car and I realized I was afraid to go home and I realized I can't take this anymore. And I just cried and I, I cried out to my brother I, I texted him one of my brothers and and I said I can't take it I can't take it and, and he didn't know what I was talking about and I couldn't I didn't know what to how to explain what I was going through because it's hard to explain something that you don't even understand what it is you know yourself and so I just he's like what do you want me to do and I was just like pray for me so he's like okay and I put myself together and I went home and like usual, I was, you know, asked questions that didn't mean anything. It was unimportant questions that he would ask me to critique or make me feel stupid. Why would you do that? You know, you could have did it this way. You know, it was always something. He would always ask me something or say something that it would like make me like I had to defend myself all the time. And I was just tired of it. You know, it felt like I was living with a bully that just kept on every day all the time like it's like can you just you know respect and love me and that's it <laughs> um and i and i just i couldn't take it no more so when i went in the house that day i didn't answer his questions anymore and i just went to my room and i started to pray and i, I said lord i'm going crazy i can't do this anymore <laughs> i need you to intervene and i was crying and i was like lord save me Help me to see what I need to see to be free, to leave him for good. Lord, there's, I keep coming back and I don't want to anymore. This is damaging me. I was like, Lord, I need you to help me, deliver me, please. And, and when I prayed that desperate prayer, when I said, help me to see with the eyes of truth, I started to see him differently. And from then on, when he started to speak to me, I could see the truth. I could see that when he was lying, I could see when he was faking an emotion, I, everything became clear. God literally gave me new eyes and I wasn't falling for nothing no more. I said, I'm not, I'm not going to give, I'm not going to react. You know, I started to see that he would do things on purpose to make me mad or jealous. And I said, I'm not reacting to this anymore. And, um, you know, it got a little worse. Um, he saw that he couldn't control my emotions anymore. And, you know, so it made him lose more interest. And um, so he would do things sometimes to like get me mad or something. And so finally, when we decided to get a divorce, um, when I finally got him to, 
you know, agree to it because <laughs> I just needed the words of him saying, yes, let's break up, you know, because he wouldn't do that. And I would hang on to the words. But I finally got him to agree to do the divorce. And after that, it was it was very hard. It was the hardest, you know, months after that. And that's why I always say, don't tell them, don't break up with them. Don't tell them what you're planning to do until you're ready to leave, because it's going to be hell before you move out. But, you know, it wasn't too bad, but I suffered a lot, you know, um, emotionally. Um, I prayed for God to give me strength and he started to, even though I felt afraid, no matter, even if you feel afraid, God's going to be there with you and he's going to help you, you know, feeling fear doesn't mean that you can't do nothing. I was afraid. I cried every day, but I kept pushing forward. I decided to tell my dad what, what was happening and, and I told him I'm leaving for good this time, Bob, and I wanted him to take it serious and, um. And God, God was there because my dad was supportive and that wasn't something that he normally did. You know, he saw that I was serious. He saw that I, I cried and he's like, I support you. You know what I mean? He put his arm around me and my brother was there. He put his arm around me. <laughs> it touched my heart. It was what I needed to keep going, you know, because I never had like that emotional support and so that was what I needed to keep going and God was helping me God was helping me um my car was about to break down at that time and I, that was another thing in my prayer that I kept saying Lord bless me with a car I can't leave without a car you know I need a car and and I would pray like Lord I don't have money saved up but you you're the God of impossibility you know you're the one that makes things you know I started to pray boldly and when the day that my car broke down I got a letter from SSI saying that we owe you eight thousand dollars and i knew that that was god and i give him all the glory for it and i got a new car with that money and um you know i applied for child support which i was very scared to do because i didn't want him to to make him mad um you know he wasn't happy about it but praise god you know i survived it there wasn't you know it was hard fear was the main thing you know what i mean and so don't ever let fear keep you bound. Don't ever let fear make you think you can't do it just because you feel afraid. I, I was very fearful, but I pushed myself because I knew this is not the life I want for my kids to be around. This is not the life I want to live for myself. You know, a relationship should be about love and respect and caring for one another. It should not be a competition. It should not be about bullying and putting people, you know, each other down and cheating and everything lies that should not that's not what a healthy relationship should be about um you know but i left it i left it three years ago and i, I went out moved out on my own and it was the beginning of a very hard healing process but every day i prayed every day i prayed i cried I was afraid at times. A lot of times I was afraid. <laughs> um, but I got through it. Looking back, all I could see is Jesus through it all. Like, Lord, that wasn't all me. You know, that was him. The God gave me the strength. You know, he answered my prayers. I would ask him to give me wisdom and understanding. Why, why did this happen to me? How did I get, st you know, he just, he kept bringing me back to my past, you know. A lot of answers are in our past, in our upbringings and stuff. And um, God was teaching me those things in those days. But praise God, I'm healed. It's It's been three years since I left this person. Well, almost three years. Um, that first year that I left, it, it was hell. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not going to sit there and say it's going to be so easy when you leave them. I'm going to let you know it's going to be hard when you leave somebody, when you leave a, a toxic relationship. The healing process is different than when you leave a normal relationship. Um, and so I went through it. I went through it. Um, but I got through. I didn't think I would be normal again. I didn't think I would feel normal or be myself again. But I am. I'm able to laugh now. I'm able to joke around now. I'm able to dream again. You know, I thought I was damaged for good. I thought I was damaged goods. But the devil was the devil was a liar. You know, so 
There's a light at the end of the tunnel. When you cling to Jesus, he's going to set you free. So please choose today to be free. Be free from fear. You know, be free from everything that the devil wants you to settle for. You're better than that. You know, you deserve everything that you dream of. God gives us dreams because he's showing us a glimpse of what he wants our life to be. He wants our life to be as good as our dreams. He doesn't want us to be yearning to have better. He wants best for us. So we need to fight for that and um, believe in it and don't give up. I hope this video was helpful. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and stay tuned. More to come. God bless you guys.